All right, so switching gears and what's next with pipeline, my favorite subject, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, you know, Damien talked this morning about digital transformation. You all hear the term, many of you are going through it in different fashions. Uh, well, when I think about pipeline operators and digital transformation, one thing is they need access to more data. They need high fidelity data. Uh, many of you are looking at or maybe have implemented APR, the ArcGIS pipeline referencing. As well, you might be exploring the utility network. And then again, you need access to additional information across your organization. And so here to show us how I can pull all that together uh, from Esri, Jeff Allen. Jeff. Thanks, Dal. Okay. So one of my professional goals in life is to convince Dal Hunter that pipeline is cool. So that's what I'm going to try to do this morning. We'll see how we work out. But uh, so as Dal mentioned, you know, one of the real needs behind the digital transformation is this real need to get all the data into the GIS to have it available to all these workflows. So all the things you're seeing on stage this morning really start with putting that data into the enterprise geodatabase and make it available to the organization. And that's a real challenge that we've had in the past. I mean, how many have sat in a room and a meeting and say, hey, this is a cool idea, let's do this, but then turn around and only find out that we only have half the data to perform that operation, right? So one of the things that we've been working on at Esri is how to take all this pipeline information and put it into the geodatabase and tie it all together. And one of the biggest challenges we have with that, with that is that there's so many different places in that supply chain, and they all have different needs for modeling that pipeline data, right? Whether we're working in offshore and gathering, on the main transmission lines using linear referencing, or inside those stations, the needs and the data requirements and how we model and manage that data can be completely different across the organization. So what we've really been working on is how to bring this data together. Oftentimes we find that the data exists, but it might exist in different places within the organization. It might be locked away in CAD files or locked away in a building information system, a BIM file somewhere. But we really need to bring that data in. That's why I'm going to show you a little bit of that today with our integration with Autodesk. But then finally, we have two tools, and Dal mentioned them in the stack, that are really kind of focused on this pipeline data management. So managing from the, from the wellhead all the way to the, to the meter point and everything in between. That's pipeline referencing and the new utility network and putting all that data into a common geodatabase. So let's take a look at the demo and see what, uh, how this all works together. So for most of us that have worked in the pipeline industry, pretty common map. You see some gathering lines here, a uh, transmission line with some facilities along the way, and some offshore pipelines. And as we look at this a little closer, let's dive into one of these locations along the pipeline. We could see a typical station that we might have modeled in the pipeline GIS. Maybe this is a point feature or a polygon feature. It maybe has the main line uh, uh, pipe coming into the station. You could see a launcher receiver assembly, the main line valves. And in this case, this is a transmission pipeline, so we've got the calibration of points along those lines. And we set up all this data and manage, manage it using the new location referencing tools. But if we take a look behind the scenes, you can see there's a lot more going on inside the fence here, right? So if we were to integrate this with a sort of work order operations and the field crews showed up at this location, there's all kinds of other stuff going on here. You can see buildings, some above ground piping. So how do we take that data and pull it into the enterprise GIS? Well, like I mentioned, oftentimes this data sits somewhere else in the organization. And in this case, maybe it's an AutoCAD civil 3D drawing. So this is a drawing of this station. You can see all the station piping laid out. Maybe I've got some dimensioning arrows. And in this case, this, this is a full 3D model. So all these pipes have elevation associated with them as well. So what I'm going to do now back in Pro is I'm actually going to use a couple of calibration points. In this case, I found some common points here at the, at the fence line. And then I'm going to go ahead and georeference and bring that CAD drawing right into the, into the GIS. So I'm going to directly read that civil 3D drawing bring it into the background of my map, and visualize all those reference points together. So now I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on in this station. Um, but if you have used linear referencing tools, you realize that this is going to be pretty hard to create all these routes and all these calibration points. So that's why we're going to switch over and start using the new utility network to model this station. So what I've done is I've used these CAD lines as a basis to build out the rest of the model. So I've digitized those structures, I've built in the pipelines themselves, both the above ground and below ground features, and then added things like my pipeline devices, those would be the valves and the pumps, 
as well as all the junctions, right? These would be the T's and the elbows and all the fittings that bring this together. So now I have a full three-dimensional model, all connected, built out within my GIS. But you can also see we've got some data missing. You can see these buildings here really probably have more piping inside of those. So one of the things we have access to as part of the utility network is a concept called containment. And what I can do with containers is I can build a GIS within a GIS. So here I'm going to enter this container and take a look at some more data. So when I hit, click on that container, it'll drive me into that location, open up that container, and then show more details of what I've got going on inside the station. And as I can zoom in, I can see more features here. Now, one of the other th concepts you can see is that I don't have these pipelines all spatially connected. I've got two flanges here in a valve, but one of the things I can do in the utility network is actually see that connectivity. So I have a rule in my rule base that says, hey, I can connect these point features together and have a full flow model through this station. So to kind of really show how all this comes together in a workflow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a trace on this station. So I'm going to identify a starting point here on my transmission line. And I'm also going to add a couple of barriers. So I'm going to add a barrier just short of this customer station here and also one here coming out of my facility. And then I'm going to run a connected trace against this facility. So I'm going to include those containers, because I want to see everything inside of it. And I'm also going to run a function along the way. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the minimum design pressure and the maximum design pressure of this facility. So I'll go ahead and run that trace. It'll look through all that connected model, look at all those design pressures for me, and bring back those results. And if I scroll down here to the bottom of the results pane, you'll see the minimum MAOP and maximum MAOP for this station. So you can con con configure this uh, in larger models. So I might want to send this information down to another, another process. But you can think of this as a very powerful tool if we were doing capacity planning on this whole pipeline segment to see where our limits are as far as capacity goes. So now I can take that data, now that it's all connected together, and visualize it in different ways. So you can see this is a pretty complicated site. I've got pipes that cross over each other. I've got a couple buildings that they go inside of. As an operations person, I might want to take a different look and a more cleaner picture of what's going on here. So I've taken these same layers from the facility uh, utility network and put them into the new diagram tool. So once I run them through the diagram tool, I have a lot of different options. And here's a pretty simple flow diagram of what this station looks like. So now you can easily see that launch receiver assembly. You can see the buildings and what's contained what's inside of them and how everything is connected together. Now, these are live link. So if I go here to the network diagram tab, I select one of these valves. And then I apply that selection back to the map. You can see everything's tied together. Now, I could take these diagrams, I could take these maps, and I could publish them to my portal and make those available to the, to the folks within the organization. Now, the other thing I could do is, using that same data set, is drop that same data set into a 3D view. So now I have a 3D view that fairly clearly shows me what's going on within this facility. Now, it looks like I've got some missing pipe here. But that's really not the case. What's really going on is those pipes are underground. So I can see how the above ground piping and below, below ground piping interact. And I can also see that if I just turn the imagery off, I can see those features directly from the utility network displayed in the map. So now they got that full connected model. I can zoom around, take a look at things. Let's do a reverse view, reverse view here. I could see that launch a receiver assembly and all the elbows and T's that come out of it. But you can remember what, back when I was inside of that facility, I was showing you that uh, valve with those two flanges. So where did that data come from? So again, back to our integration with Autodesk, I was able actually to add that data directly from the building information file, the BIM file from a Revit file that, that I brought in from an outside source. So here I'm going to correct, directly connect to the Revit file. I can see all the different layers I have inside. I'm interested in piping. 
and I'll go ahead and add that to my scene. So now, with inside the, the, the Pro Viewer, I can see that Revit file together with my utility network data. I can zoom around, and you can see exactly where I got that information for my utility network coming in from the as-built from the Revit file. So there's my valve from the Revit file with all its attributes overlaid directly with the two flanges on the outside of the valve and that valve event inside the, uh, inside the station. So pretty quickly, being able to use the utility network in conjunction with ArcGIS pipeline referencing, I'm able to build out a full station view with all its attributes and a connected model that I can use all those down, downstream workflows in the digital environment. Pretty cool, Jeff. I told you, Dal. All right, thanks, Jeff, appreciate it.